Yo, it's MJ. What up? I'm Sam Gundy. And it's the seat at the table, a place where we don't beg for work, we make it. We're a seat at this table is earned, not given. Our first two guests got DJ Artistic and Mary, two legends in their own right. Let's check them out. You ready, G? You know I am. Let's get it. Break a leg. If I do something wrong, they on my head. But if I do something right, then they like trust it. Uh. Alright, ladies and gents. Name of the game is spades. Okay. Well, while we get ready to go, go ahead, Miss Letty, introduce yourself. Um, what's the deal, everybody? My name is Mary. Um, I run a nonprofit and I'm a manager to two different creatives, a producer and an author. Okay. Yes, sir. I got you, got you. Much respect for that. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah. Okay, she over here, everything. Arthur, producer, she got it all. You feel me? What's up, artistic? What's the good, deal, man? Legend. Not too much, man. What's good with y'all? I am DJ Artistic. I'm a DJ, born and raised, Gardena, California, of course. Um, I play people's music that I didn't make, you know, so that's, that's, <laughs> my, whole, that's my whole job and all that, but I've been DJing now for about 15, 16 years. Used to produce. Used to rap as a kid like everybody else. Okay. Can't rap no more, don't ask me to. But you know, that's what it is, though. You're from Gardena, we neighbors. Yeah. Oh, for real? I was Where? born in Carson. Are you Carson? Okay. Come on yeah. now. Come on now. Man, so we neighbors RDA. too. Where I'm you in Victorville. <laughs> <laughs> you a plane right away. Yeah, yeah you feel me? You feel me? About an hour and a half or something. Yeah, stop, you know, Steve. Because every bad bitch in the city tattered ambition. Nah, nah, fuck your initials. Every bad bitch where you live tattered ambition. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead and start us off real quick okay. with the Ace of Diamonds. So, Miss Miri, <laughs> how'd you get into? <laughs> how'd you get into into your profession? I've always like loved music since I was young, and my mentor at the school um, is a writer and a musician. And um, I used to tell her all the time how I'm trying to get into like music. I have a keen for leadership and like. Blase Blase, and she was working directly with 1500, and they were doing the academy. I went in there for marketing, okay. but later came to find out that I really liked like the process of making a song. So from the beat, and then getting the product, and then taking it places, that's what I figured out that I like to do. So from there, I just started uh, making like genuine friendships with people in the city, artists. My turn again, I'm so sorry. So no, you never, good, but that's how it goes. You never had to change lanes. You knew immediately, this is what you're passionate about. Yeah. This is what I want to do. From, from when I was like probably 16 years old, I used to go to the BET experience all the time, trying to connect with, I went, I know that for mm-hmm. No, it's um, not, it's <laughs> my man, oh my God. Um, trying to connect with like different artist managers, because I knew that I wanted, like, I have a, keen for leadership, but I love music, and I wanted to put the two and two together. I feel like it might be in you. I mean, being around it so much, you yeah. grew up out here. I feel like everybody who grew up in the L.A. area has a musical gene to them or something. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. That's how I see it, so. OK. I that's know. a nice little segue. Yeah. yeah. Good segue. Nice little segue. Good segue. Huh? segue. What about you, man? You know? <laughs> about me, yeah, man, yeah, you know, yeah. You know, tell us about everybody. your early ages, which, you know, a little it's bit of rap. Ages. Oh, that's not, that's not your book. That's their book. That's right. Somebody got to play. It ain't nothing I want more. It ain't nothing I want more. I ain't really get into DJing until college. It was just more so I was producing, I was rapping back in the day. And I ain't really mean to become a DJ. It was more so me being at FAMU. I went to FAMU for college. HBCU. HBCU. Yeah, HBCU. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, HBCU. Yeah, HBCU. There we go. You feel me? So there we go. There. It was Grand the stage, you already like, know. Oh, we got Grand in the building. Yeah, so oh, they would know. Like out there, LA was probably like 100 deep. LA was 100 deep. The Bay was about 80 deep. The school was 13,000, so at the club, you ain't hearing nothing but all the uh, down south music. Bang. That's back when Boozy was popping. That's yeah. back when it was Florida had all their music popping, the Trick Daddy, the Plies, all that. You would get that one L.A. song every club. You would get the game, How We Do, or Drive It Like It's Hot. 
Oh, you're a jerk. Jerk. I know. You're a all jerk. That, all that stuff. That was before that era. Even before oh, Jerkin. Oh, so. yeah, 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 yeah. Even yeah. Jerkin era, they started rocking with the L.A. music. But back right, then, they right. didn't. So it was like, let me just do these, do these house parties. We was having these house parties, all West Coast people. I'm just playing off of an old playlist. I wasn't even mixing nothing. After just a while, it's it like everybody kept on coming through to the parties. And it's like, let me just get some cheap equipment. You know, right. so I had an internship. Spent that money on some equipment. I had like $85 left. I said, I ain't got a job. I'm in school. Let me make this money back. So facts, I started hitting up everybody on Facebook, like hire me for whatever, $30, $40. I'm doing whole parties for five hours for 30 bucks. Hey, you know, as I was growing up, it was hard to see like young people go out into the community and try to help, especially help homeless people or help people that, you know, are less fortunate than them. Honestly, I used to do this with my church back when I was younger. And so, I'm from Eritrea, and so I came to America when I was six years old. And so, like, I came to America, like, the way we live back home is obviously way hey, different. different than here. And so it's like, people are real cruel out here. Like, there's no, there's no sense of tribe, there's no sense of village, and that's what I'm used to. So it's like, every time I met with, like, some type of trial or tribute, like, you know, some, like, mm -hmm. it's like a problem, I love it. Because yeah. it's like, the other side, what's on the other side is so fulfilling, and it's gonna be worth, like, you going through it. And what, which was mine? Which, which came? That one? <laughs> hey, man, there's not too many good human beings in this world. She's one of them, you feel me? She's out here making it happen. It's just coming up, you know what I'm saying? It's all good, though. I ain't tripping. So basically, the way I see it is that um, Ooh. when quarantine first hit, it was nobody knew what was going to happen. So, of course, we remember, like, the whole month of March 2000 and, um, 2020. It was, like, the first week or so, we all thinking about, like, OK, so, so basically, we're hearing about this virus that's in China that it might come to America. So we having jokes about it. I heard black folks can't get it. <laughs> Then next thing you know, it's like, we got shut down from that. So our, my manager was basically like, look, so I don't know how long it's going to be. It might be two weeks. It might be two months. It might be longer. But, uh, you know, get, go on Instagram Live and, you know, go live uh, this weekend. So mm -hmm. I, I know D-Night started probably that Thursday, so he had to head start on, on everybody else. But I got on that Saturday night. And I was on there just like, you know, it's nothing else to do. I got a couple weeks off. I ain't going to make no money. Let me just go on Instagram Live. I'm going to have a whole set. I'm going to have a 30-minute set for each thing for old school, 30 minutes of funk, 30 minutes of West Coast, 30 minutes of down south. Fire. It. All that. So fire. I'm on there the whole time just DJing. Everybody kept on saying, what's your cash app? Pin it. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know how to pin that. Like, yeah. <laughs> I never used Instagram Live before. Yeah, you I'm, you I'm sound like me. You sound like me out here. Yeah, I know what's happening. I'm just going for like four hours, and then I just stopped with probably like, I had up to maybe 850 people on there that night. At when one, I stopped, damn. at one time, when I stopped, there was probably at like 300. And I probably should have kept going. Not probably, I should have kept going. I ain't had nothing else to do, but I'm I'm sitting there, I was drinking some uh, Incredible Hulk just to be funny, because it was at a whole down south uh, oh, set. So I, I mixed the Hennessy <laughs> with the Hypnotic. I oh, was lit, I was crazy. lit. So I brought finished, I'm like, let me just check my cash out. They kept asking, I'm like, this is more money than I made from any party in my life. Hey. Off, off Instagram Live, I nice. said, I don't know how long it's gonna last, but let me keep on pushing this. So from there, I just kept on doing it like three times a week. I had the West Side Wednesdays, which I still do on Twitch. Yeah. I kept it rolling. So I said, once the pandemic is over, let me come out strong. I'm thinking it would have been over by, you know, a year ago or something. Yeah. But of course, we're still in it right now. But I said, once we open up, let me just go out with a boom. Bro, you've been yeah. in the game so long. How do you adapt to like different age groups, different genres, essentially? It's just about really staying. It's like, it's two sides to it, but overall, um, cause one side is for me being kind of the historian type DJ, I'm always trying to find the music too. So even last night, I'm on title track radio. I'm playing an old Marvin Gaye song, Heavy Love Affair. I'm like, let me find what songs sound like this. So I'm finding songs from the seventies I never heard before. But at the same time, two days ago, I was like, let me go to the club just to hear what's new. Because a lot of times when you DJ a whole lot, you miss what's coming out because you always working. You don't know what was working everywhere else. So a lot of times you find songs from going out or just going on TikTok, going on Instagram, Twitter, just seeing comments like what songs are popping because you can spend eight hours trying to find the music and you go to a club and you still hear 10 new songs you never heard before. Bad, so damn, it's about going to everything. Like whenever I'm out of town, especially Atlanta, going to Memphis, going to New York, let me go to the youngest hood club that's still safe. I ain't trying yeah. to go to, to the dangerous hood club, but to a hood Ooh. club that's gonna play the different stuff because the hood clubs, you're hearing the local music. The commercial club, just like in LA, Hollywood, you're hearing the same commercial radio songs, but you go to that, that hood club over in Inglewood or in Compton, it's like, it's a little bit dangerous to be hearing them, them songs that you ain't gonna hear nowhere else. Yeah. 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 
So I kept funneling people to Mars. Yeah. And his, um, another lady that we work with, Kimmy. And then, like, it was just, yo, Mir, you like, you got somebody? I'm like, yo, don't even worry about it. I send you three options. <laughs> and then it just got so consistent that I joined the team and then I had, like, solutions for a lot of problems. So then we just kind of went like that. And um, I'm gonna take it. It's gonna take it to a different okay. level, yeah. you know. I love, yeah. I love partnerships. I love like making brands uh, be a part of like different things. So this year we're about to like, it's gonna be a great experience. This year, huh? Yeah. I'm feeling it. I'm there feeling we go. Take, last, off. take off. Yeah, the last couple years we've been doing it every single Sunday. After church is not related to God. People have that misconception every day. Like, yo, can I? Can uh -oh. I smoke? Can I drink? Like, really? what kind of music is it? Uh, like, a lot after, of you don't want to smoke in church, after, right? You know I mean? right <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's after church, so people. Yeah. Once I tell them, like, you can get jiggy, however you want, they're like, oh, okay. You've been a staple in this game for so long, and we kind of seen you in a little bit of everything. And there was a point that we actually seen you on Insecure, Issa Rae. Yeah. Yeah. Talk on yeah. that. Hello. So Issa, yeah, that's the homie right there. She's been yeah. salute to her for doing everything she's been doing out here. So. I connected with her back in 2014. It was a 90s party that she had back then. And then I did the Insecure premiere, which was, um, okay, I see you, I see you. <laughs> which was back in 2016. And then from there, I've been rocking with her heavy. So I've done um, you, I've done two of her birthday parties. I did her wedding. Then I was on that, that episode, episode uh, season three, episode two. Okay. So it was filmed out here in LA, of course, at Five Dodo. The uh, club over there off of, uh, Adams, I think. So yeah, yeah, it was yeah. a good time. Like it's crazy because everybody who watches Insecure is always saying like we need longer episodes. But yeah. I realized that it took us, I think, 26 hours for a five minute scene. 26, 26 hours. 26 hours. It takes so long for each scene because they they're getting everything at five different angles. Right. Every little Not commentary is like right. so many legit cameras. It ain't like. Back in the day, we was watching Girlfriends and Jamie Foxx just had one or two cameras that's mm -hmm. this angle, this angle, in the same exact setting. It's always in King's Towers in this spot, or it's in, at Joan House. There, it's always on different locations. So I'm realizing, okay, I see how it takes so long, but it was a great time being on there, though. They gave me my own trailer. They had that gourmet food on deck. So yeah. They had the filet mignon and all that, so. So who treated, yeah. who treated you better, Issa yeah. Rae or Diddy? I mean, <laughs> I would say so. That, that's, all, that's all the homies. So that, that's all folks who look out. I would say... I ain't gonna say it's about better, but I mean, I've been rocking with Issa for, for so long now. With uh, with Diddy, that was my first time doing Diddy's party, July 4th. Oh, you had and, it going yeah. crazy too, son, UG. But you were, man, that, I, was, yeah. I was watching that, John. I was right, watching yeah. that on my IG. I was like, oh, this is okay. Yeah, it, was, it, was, it was a good time. I, it, it's crazy just being able to, to rock with people who I grew up listening to their music and playing their music. Because, I mean, I would have never thought, even when I was producing and rapping, I'm like, if I could do a song with Diddy, that means I made it. So. Facts, I'm actually facts. DJing for them is always always a good thing. And the funny thing is, a lot of artists like him don't even want you to play their music. He like, just play whatever. Like, you ain't got to have no whole bad boy set. Just just go in, do your thing. So. Has there ever got to a point, especially with you being around so many people, I don't want to say that you idolized, but looked up to in this industry, was there ever like a wow moment? Like, damn, I'm really working with Diddy. I'm really working with so-and-so. I would say for me, probably doing All-Star with Snoop, because, um, and the way it came about, too, because everybody knows it's been my favorite rapper forever. So that was All Star 2018. And the fact that the gig came so late, because a lot of times uh, as a DJ, when you have a big weekend, you don't want to book something too small to where you can't do something bigger that comes. But gotcha. then you hate when you leave that, that weekend open and it's like, all right, nothing comes. So mm -hmm. that Wednesday came and I'm like, all right, I got a couple cool gigs, but nothing that's really at that level. Uh, I had something for that Sunday that got canceled. So I'm like, all right, I guess I'm off after the game. And then next thing you know, uh, the homie hits me up, Al B hits me up from Pasadena, like, hey, we got a Snoop and Floyd All-Star, you down? I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm with it. So the fact that I was able to do that and, and ride next to Snoop, and of course, like, Snoop is actually just as cool as you would imagine. Just like usual, like, security was being way worse than him. It was where, like, I'm DJing, and he had, he had a set too, he was DJing, he still DJs, you know, Snoop Adelic, whatever it is. And with that, I'm like, I'm on stage with him, but I have to get off stage because it's like, yo, yeah, Snoop's up there. You got to make sure it's only Snoop. You can't be up there with him. And I'm like, all right, I guess I'll go down here and chill. Snoop was like, no, nah, he good. He can stay. So uh, rocking next to him. And he don't even play his own music half the time. So I was able to play Ain't No Fun as he was walking off. So yeah. that's my favorite song of all time.
would you tell an up and coming DJ? Like how? It's, like what would they do? I would say at this point, DJing is, is changing. The main thing now is just about really learning your crowds and, and realizing that there's a, a lane for whatever music you're into. So you don't have to really force, because like even 10, 12 years ago, everybody told me, if you want to be a big DJ, you got to play EDM, because that's when that's everybody was doing EDM. EDM is that's when like Usher was doing the Oh My God and Rihanna was doing EDM. And so it felt like you had to do EDM to be a big DJ. And I always said, I don't like EDM like that. I could play, let me learn enough of it to where if I have a gig where I have to play it, if it's corporate, I can go five, 10 minutes EDM, but I didn't want to be an EDM DJ like that. So I stuck to my guns and just said, I'm, I'm gonna just stay with, with the with the hip hop. And it took me where it took me to. So I would say it's a lane for whatever it is that you do, whatever you into. So just focus on that. But also one thing about DJing compared to anything else is that, I mean, it's similar with everything else, but overall it's about being a personable human being because- 1,000%. Because a lot of times the DJs out there who are dope, talented, but if people don't like you, if they don't rock with you, they won't hire you, you're breaking them bonds. So make sure that you connect with people and that you're genuine. Don't just try to kiss up the people just so you can blow up and like ride their coattails. Make sure that you actually are genuine. So, I think you could take that yeah. with anything you do in life too. It's real, it's real. One thing that I would say is confidence. Confident that, uh, confidence in your plan. First, I'm sorry. I used to multitask. <laughs> these days, it's I can't it's do tricky. shit. Okay, yeah. queen walking, black yeah, queen, yeah. okay? Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, that's how okay, I'm feeling. That's cool. But I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you, but keep going. It's your world. <laughs> that's your world. <laughs> that's your world. <laughs> that was cute. <laughs> um, so confidence is the biggest thing. Like, knowing that you're des like you're supposed to be where you are, not second-guessing yourself. This yeah. can go for anything, too. Whatever it is that you do, um, it's like, you know, <clears throat> Trusting in yourself, whoever your higher power is, I believe in God. So trusting that God is gonna take me wherever. Damn. So. Mm, I'm yeah, it's tough. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I don't know. I'm risky. I don't know what I was doing, oh, okay. but I did it. Okay, so. risky. Yeah. Okay. Oh, another thing. Yeah. Not to ask for permission, but to ask for forgiveness when you're doing mm. shit. Yeah. Uh, nah, but I think that is some like a very important piece of information. You know, taking it where it fits, not applying it everywhere, but like not being so timid about making moves or like not waiting for people to say that, yeah, this is a good idea. You should go do it. Like, especially for the nonprofit stuff, you want to be a talent coordinator, like this goes for everything. Like having the confidence in yourself that the idea that you are trying to put in place is that idea. Like right. it's a good idea. <laughs> Smoke marijuana, watch Casa in the crib, got remarkable views. Is there any last words? Y'all want to get your shout outs, man? Let the people know where they can find you, tap in, and it don't matter who go first, you feel me? Ladies first. Always. Um, got some chivalry. <laughs> got some. Um, my nonprofit's uh, Instagram is thepackproject.org, and then my social media is okmiri. Um, yeah. You might want to spell that out for them. You know, some people ain't. Oh, true. I can't spell some that out. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Some people don't be some there. Some people yeah. skip English class. Some people don't be there. So it's O-K-A-Y-M-I-R-I. Okay, Miri. Hold on, let me get these real quick. <laughs> yes, he did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah find me at um, DJ R-T-I-S-T-I-C. Find me on Super Twitch fine. at um, at Artistic310. That's R-T-I-S-T-I-C 310. I have a podcast called Behind the Wheels with my boy EB. It's on Apple Podcasts and Spotify Podcasts. Um, al along with that, just find me in LA. Find me wherever at you at. DC, Atlanta, I'm always out there too. So that's what it is. Y'all know we family now, so don't be no stranger. Okay. Okay. You already know how it goes. You already Appreciate know I'm your boy man. MJ. Seat at the table with my man Goody. Hey, hey let's yeah, get it. Who's like right behind you? You know, yeah. At the yeah. table we link up, at the table we speak up We can formulate a plan to get it done Don't know where you came from, but where you at now We built the foundation and table where we all sat down and chop it up We stayed down for too long and now the stock is up Look at how we popping up, accumulated losses Turning tables like a faucet, looking down on us until they come addresses as they bosses 
Looking at it's crazy when we take risks Make them think we lost our minds till it makes sense Circle small, but if we on the same grind Share the same mind, there's enough room for us to all eat at the same time If we on the same grind Share the same mind, there's enough room for us to all eat at the same yeah. time At the table we meet up, at the table we show love At the table all my brothers come as one, yeah At the table we speak up, at the table we think up We can formulate a plan and get it done, yeah At the table we meet up, at the table we show love At the table all my brothers come as one at the table we link up, at the table we speak up, we can formulate a plan to get it done.